that. <laughs> but there is one thing I'm curious about. Y'all called operator and, and got information, got long distance. Were well, y'all calling from outside the state of Texas or something? Yeah, uh, we're kind of close to Oklahoma. We oh, okay. <laughs> All right. We can't help it. The Lord works in mysterious ways. Amen to that. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Can you hear me back there? Can you hear me back there? All right. Well, what? Oh, okay. So here it is. Uh, I was talking I was talking on the phone uh, to Ty, as a matter of fact. When I first started, I was talking to Fritz. I get lots of phone calls. Uh, Hello, 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 hello. There you go. There you go. That was it. All right, all right. Here's so here base. I was. More base. More base. <laughs> yeah, what? All right, I'll keep talking. So anyway, here we go. My wife and I bought us a stallion here a while back. Y'all remember me talking about him. And, uh, when we were first married, I made the statement, there's no horse going to be on our property that's not saddle broke. We bought an 11-year-old stallion, and that, that statement came back to haunt me. <laughs> so I'm talking to Fritz, and I, I put the lead on him, and I'm still talking to Fritz on the phone, and I walk into the round pen, Kind of, kind of get him calmed down, and I say, "Okay, Fritz, I, I got to go, brother. I'm, I'm, you know, messing with the stallion here, and, and then these these things are, are unpredictable." So I hung up with Fritz, and I I start playing with him, and, and, and on a on a horse that's flighty like this, I, I I have to take it in stages. So I got the saddle blanket, and I kind of rubbed it on him, let him smell of it, and I was rubbing it on it, and Ty called, so I'm talking to Ty. And I ease the saddle blanket up on his back. And he's just standing like a gentleman. I'm thinking, man, this is going to be great. And I get the saddle and I make sure everything's popped up over the seat so it don't, you know, I slap him on the side. And I'll, I'll hold it and I'll let him smell up and i rub it all over him. And I ease it up on his back and he just stands there. I man, this is great. So I go on the other side of him, pull everything down real nice and gentle, ease the girt down back on his left side and I pull it under him and I make about three rounds with the latigo through the girt and the D ring. Still talking to Ty and I pulled it up and I got it just about the time it connected his body. I went, gave it a good pull and I stepped back and he was straight up in the air. Oh, I said, yeah, ain't gonna be as fun as I thought it was. <laughs> he bumped around a little bit but but his, his mind has a, has a desire to please. Now, I can understand that there was something heavy on his back, and then all of a sudden it grabbed him around the belly Why he bucked. There are times that I feel the same way. But his head's in the right spot. And, and PJ and I, when, when we look at, at, at horses and stallions and, and mares, and, and we always look for foundation breeding stock. We love the old foundation quarter horses. They're, they're short, they're wide, they're, they're big boned. I just love them. And they've got a mind that's willing to please. They've got a, a work ethic that you can ride them all day and they'll still give it to you in the evening. Good foundation stock. Now I have friends that breed cut horses and reining horses and all these things. And they always say, you know, I don't know why you want these foundation quarter horses. You know how many years we spent trying to breed all that junk out of them? But they've got horses that perform, and they perform well. Cutting ring, they get in there for two and a half minutes, and they really perform well. They get in the, in the, reining, the reining arena, they get two and a half, three minutes, they'll do their little thing. They perform great. But you go out onto the big ranches and you look at them working cow horses and what do they got? 
They got the old steel dust foundation quarter horses. Because one of my friends who was a cutting horse man won't have anything other than. And uh, he came over and looked at my horse. He said, no, nah, I wouldn't have any of them. Horse ain't good unless it shows you a little white when you walk up to him, you know. And I, I just come down and don't understand that. I like them to have a good, gentle eye. I can walk up to them, and I know that they're dependable. No matter what, like I said, this is an 11-year-old stallion that for the first seven years of his life had no interaction with humans. They left him out in the pasture. And then they they got a trailer and backed it up to a a, a corral, a look and shoot, and they ran him in a trailer and they carted him from Idaho to New Mexico. And it took a few months, but they got him gentled down to where they could use him in hand to take care of his business. And then the uh, third ride in a trailer in his life was when I went up there to pick him up. I even didn't really want to go in a trailer, but it didn't take long for us to get him in. His fourth and fifth ride was, was with me. I unloaded him and, and loaded him back up, took him to the vet. And he has no problem. He'll walk right in the trailer. He's got a willingness to please. I know that even though he spent seven years acting like a wild Mustang, once you've got him in hand, he's dependable. That's what a foundation, that's what having a good foundation is all about. You know, <clears throat> in Matthew, I'm going to go to three different places in the Bible, but in Matthew, Sixteen, verse thirteen. Matthew sixteen, verse thirteen. Christ was at a at a region called Caesarea of Philippi. He was sitting and talking to his disciples, and he asked them. He says, "Who do the people say the Son of Man is?" They replied, "Some say John the Baptist; others say Elijah." Still others, Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Christ asked him, but what do you, what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Peter jumped right in and answered, you are the Christ, son of the living God. He said, Simon, uh, I said, Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell should not overcome it. Christ was asking him, who do you think I am? Peter knew. You are Christ. You came down from heaven to live with us and teach us how to be. Now there's one thing about Christ if you read all four Gospels, you read Acts, and you read all the New Testament, and then you go back to the prophecies in the Old Testament. He was dependable. He did not try to rebel. He had a soft eye. He wanted to please his master. He was all about pleasing his master. That's what having a good foundation is all about. And he said that. He wasn't talking about Peter being the rock. But the knowledge that Jesus Christ is the son of the true living God in the flesh, living on earth to be a human sacrifice for our sins. That is the foundation that Christ represents. Now, there's a few builders in here. You folks that do it professionally, you folks that do it as a hobby, I guess you could say, or as honeydews. But when you build something, first thing you start with 
his foundation. And if I built me a shed, which I, I built one for a storage shed at the house, if I built me a shed and my foundation, I just drug a bunch of dirt up there and set it down and put the floor on it, it would not last, especially in our soil. It would rot out in a heartbeat. But if I took and I poured me a pad, well, actually I used uh, pressure treated four before but then I, then I put them and I used that as a foundation. First thing I did was I leveled the ground and I packed it down. And I started with a good solid foundation. We're building a house. You, you put a pier and beam, you put concrete in the ground. If you do it with, with a pad, you dig down there, level out, throw you some concrete down. A good solid rock foundation. And you ensure that them piers go all the way down to the rock, to, to something solid. That way your house don't be like ours. But you always start with a good foundation. I like Titus. When I get back there. Paul was talking to Titus. And this is Oh, wrong page. <laughs> Titus 3, starting in 9. Paul said, Avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and, quar and arguments and quarrels about the law because these are unprofitable and useless. Warn against a divisive person once and then warn them a second time and after that have nothing to do with it. You may be sure that such a man is warped and sinful. He is self-condemned. I did a little reading, and, and you know, I have a study Bible here, and I did a real reading. And over here, it, a question was asked, which controversies are foolish? Because as Paul said, avoid foolish controversies. Which ones are foolish, and which ones are not? Here's a good answer. I liked it. It said, Christians have always recognized a common core of beliefs about what is essential, uh, essential to Christianity. Faith, repentance, and submission to the will of God. Paul expected Titus to defend these essentials. Anything else is less significant. Uh, anything else less significant is not worth fighting over, especially quarreling over who's spiritual or uh, who's more spiritual or due to heritage or lifestyle. All right. Now I'm going to offend some of the girls out here. What is the biggest, biggest thing for a man? He just absolutely cannot stand when he's dating. A lot of drama. Okay? And I, I raised kids. I raised little girls. And I raised them, and they were great when they were little. And then they hit the teen years. Oh, my Lord. And, and there are a whole lot of times that I had to ask him, is that really important? Well, yes. I mean, her whole world, come, my oldest daughter, her whole world come apart because this person didn't like what she was wearing. So? Well, Dad, you just don't understand. Obviously not. Uh, of course, this is the same girl that uh, a little boy kept, you know, messing with her, sat behind her. She got tired of it, stood up, grabbed the, you know, the high school books are not small. She grabbed the, this part of the book and clocked his nose. Pow, pow! I said, now that's what you're supposed to do when you disagree. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Drama with her. Not so much with my younger. She, she had a little different, but she just had to have it. If there was nothing going on in life, she had to make something go on. Too many times I've had to say, sit down, bad girl. 
understand. People don't like to be around that. It's, it's really stressful for people to be around a lot of drama. She never got that. Until now, she's raising her own kids. This is fun, too. But anyway, she gets to raise boys who are cut and dry. But the things that are really important, especially in our Christian life, how many people say, well, I'm Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, you know, all these things, all these different denominations of which I cannot name all of them. There, there are a whole lot of them. All have one common belief. Jesus Christ came from heaven from spiritual form into flesh. The only son of the true living God. God in the flesh. Lived on earth for 33 and a half years. He was crucified a horrible, terrible death that, that we can't even imagine nowadays. As a living sacrifice, he never once in his life sinned. Because he was all about pleasing his master, the Father. Never once in his life did he sin, but he died the life of the worst sinner that could ever have been on earth that time. He died it because of people like me. He died because of people like my wife. Yeah, he raised his hands, he already knows. Steve, Doug, I, we're all sinners. My question, which sin is worse? And, and I love this debate. Which, is, which sin is worse? Is it murder? Or is it telling a little lie? It don't matter. They're both wretched to God. Whether you tell a lie to save someone's feelings, or whether you go out and murder 27 people with an axe. It doesn't matter. They're both sins. And the best we do is like filthy rags to our God. So Jesus came into the world. He died on the cross. They buried him, and in three days, he conquered death. Three days, he conquered death. He came back to life, and he was the first in line. He's the first one to conquer death. He said, if you follow me, if you follow my word, if you follow my Father's word, and if you except that I died for you, you're going to be going to heaven. You're going to conquer death as well. That is the common belief of all Christians. I don't care if you don't like music in the church, if you don't believe in where you're at in church, if you don't believe in having a podium made of horseshoes. I don't care what drama you want to put in it, the hard, cold fact is Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and if you believe in him, if you accept him, and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're going to go to heaven. And all the things, all these other things, are not worth fighting about. They're not worth thinking about. did not get mad at that horse when he started bucking. <coughs> I did not get mad at that. Well, okay, I got a little upset with him when he stepped on my foot. But the bucking part didn't bother me. I don't get mad at him when I walk in the pen and he wants to get away from me. I don't get mad at him because he likes PJ better than me. She gives him alfalfa cubes. Because I know... <coughs> that he has the right mind. He has the foundation that is there. And we can build on that foundation. God does not care what sins you have committed. 
He don't care if you've told a little white lie or you murdered 27 people with an axe. He does not care. Because when you accept Christ as your Savior, you've got a foundation. He can build on that. It does not matter how beautiful your house is. If you do not have that solid foundation, it's going to fall. No matter how beautiful your life is, if you do not have that firm foundation, you're going to fall. And that's a choice between the eternal life and eternal death. That's a, that's a, I'm a, a person that's, you know, kind of a black and white type person, colorblind, I don't see grays. It's eternal life or it's eternal death. Which do you want? Now, I know that there's a lot of gray, gray matter around here that's, that's looking at different things. And, and when, when we look at curriculum for the homeschooling or when you go to school to see their curriculum, there's a whole lot of stuff. You know, is it, is it, uh, it, was it intelligent design or is it, uh, what's the other one? Uh, I can't remember whether they evol evolution or whatever. You know, how was the world formed? I don't care. Well, do you believe that, that this is a young earth that is only, you know, several thousand years old? Or do you believe it's an old earth of two billion years old? I don't care. Only thing I care about, Christ died for me. I accepted him as my Savior. And I'm going to heaven when I leave. And my job until then is to tell people about that good news. Tell people that there is only one way into heaven. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one enters the Father but by me. There's only one way into heaven. And anybody who wants it can have that ticket. Because in Romans he said, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Right before that he said, if you believe in your heart... If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There was no exceptions to that rule. The only rule in the world where there are no exceptions is that. Christ died for you and you can go to heaven if you believe in him. I don't care who you are, what you've done, where you've been. More, and, and a lot better than that is a little extra added bonus while you're here on earth. You're never alone. If you're here today and you're saying, you know what, I'd like to have that free ticket to heaven. I said, well, I like that hallelujah special. God of Christ has got his ticket for you. He's waiting. There is no way that I can convince you myself. It's going to take God through His Holy Spirit to, to uh, reveal this to you. And if He has revealed that to you, that there's, there's something you have to do that your life is not right and you need to accept Christ as your Savior, you need to start that relationship with Him. It's a simple prayer. All you have to do to get the ticket is go to the ticket stand and you do that with a prayer. I'm going to lead you in a prayer just like that. And if you... Uh, if you're needing to accept Christ, I ask you to follow me. Lord, Lord, I've been out here uh, running the range all by myself. I'm, I'm, Lord, I'm just lost. I'm trying to find a home. Lord, I understand that you've got a ticket to that home. And I can have it. Lord, I, I really want it. I believe with all my heart that Christ came into the world God in the flesh and died on the cross. In three days conquered that death and arose. I believe that He still lives with you and that He's coming back for me. I want you in my heart. Lord, I ask you to just fill me up with your Holy Spirit and walk with me and protect me from the, from the devil. I ask the saints in your Son's holy name. Amen. Amen. Now listen, if you, if you don't know what I've been talking about. You don't understand it. You, you want to talk about it? I'm going to grab my cup of coffee and I'm going to go and have a seat. Come talk to me.
If we sat down, nobody's going to bother me. Just come on in and talk to me. If I'm standing up talking, grab hold of me. I'm, I'm yours. If you don't feel comfortable talking to me, which I don't blame you, there's elders, there's lay pastors, there's you know all the people that stood up here on the on the stage. I'm gonna kick y'all to the curb too here. All the people that stood up here on the stage, they know the way. Our wives, they know the way. If they've got one of these rule books, most of the time they know the way. Talk to somebody, but but I I implore you. Do not leave today without knowing, without a shadow of a doubt, that when you leave this earth, you have eternal life. All right. All right. All right. All right.